Good day, everyone. This is Professor Rood, and I will be lecturing on Chapter 1 today, an introduction to physical geology. So what is geology? It is the science that studies the Earth. And there are two main branches, physical and historical geology. This course focuses on physical and geology, which encompasses studying Earth's materials, as well as the processes occurring at Earth's surface and within Earth's surfaces, what we call external and internal processes. If we look at examples of external processes, we can look at this picture here. And what we see is that water is running down the Grand Canyon and eroding rock away. That is an external process. In this image, we are seeing lava being erupted out of a volcano, Mount Etna. Now this lava formed deep within the earth. So rock melts, magma forms deep within the earth. In this case, it was later erupted at the earth's surface, in which case we call it lava. Historical geology is the other main branch within geology, and we look at the evolution of Earth overall, as far as evolution of life, as well as evolution of events, geologic events, such as when mountain ranges were formed, where lithospheric plates were located at various times in the past. So the Earth can pose some issues for people. We have what are called natural hazards, such as volcanic eruptions, floods, tsunamis, earthquakes, and landslides. Now these natural processes become hazardous when people live in these areas where these events occur. Here is a picture of uh, Japan and what is happening here after the great earthquake, a tsunami formed and rushed onto the land. And in fact, most of the damage in this case was not from the ground shaking, but from the tsunami that was generated as a result of an earthquake out in the ocean. Another important aspect of geology are the resources that come from Earth. Everything that we have in front of us has been extracted from the earth. We drink water from the earth. Soil, we use soil for various growing crops. We mine minerals and we get a lot of energy from the earth, such as fossil fuels, coal and oil, for example. A little bit of history here. In the mid-1600s, James Usher was an archbishop, and his thought was that the earth was approximately 4,000 years old. So all of the landscape that he saw on earth, he thought had to have happened very rapidly due to the young age of the earth in his view. This idea is called catastrophism. Later on, 1795, James Hutton, known as the father of modern geology, developed a concept called uniformitarianism. Uniformitarianism is often stated as the present is the key to the past. And what that means is the processes that are operating at the Earth's surface today and forming different landscapes, for instance, also are the same processes that operated in the geologic past. Looking at a picture of the Grand Canyon, we have more than one and a half billion years of Earth history represented in this area. At the very bottom are two billion year old uh, rocks, the Vishnu Schist, and the uppermost layer is 270 million years old. 
The rest of the material that is younger than 270 million years old has been removed through erosion. So if we accept uniformitarianism as an explanation of what we see and the processes operating at the Earth's surface, then we accept that the Earth is very old, much older than 4,000 years. And in fact, it has been determined to be 4.56 billion years old. That's what we call great time or immense time or deep time. This is an image of the geologic time scale. And what I want to point out here are how we divide up time in geology. So the largest amount of time is what we call an eon. There are four eons, the Phanerozoic, the Proterozoic, the Archaean, and the Hadean. These three eons here, the Hadean, Archaean, and Proterozoic, are commonly lumped together and referred to as the Precambrian. So eons represent the greatest amount of time. Eons can be subdivided into smaller time units called eras. The three eras of the Phanerozoic are the Cenozoic, Mesozoic, and Paleozoic. Now these eras uh, have a certain meaning if we can take apart what the prefix to the word is. Paleo means ancient. Zo is life. So Paleozoic is ancient life. That is the era of ancient life. Mesozoic, meso being middle, is middle life. And then finally, Cenozoic, seno means recent. So this is the era of recent life. Eras can then be subdivided into periods. And so this is a whole list of different periods here. Most of us have heard of the Jurassic because of the movie Jurassic Park. But all these names have come from, although they sound strange, have a history behind them that we will look at more closely in our geologic time chapter. The numbers here that are represented are in millions of years. So this tells you what the time constraint is for a certain period or era or eon. Then last, periods can be subdivided into epochs. And epochs just for the Cenozoic era are shown here. So summarizing, eons represent the greatest amount of time, followed by eras, periods, and then epochs are the smallest. So the next portion, the next section that we're going to discuss is the scientific method, and that will be introduced in our next video.